Okay, so this is one of the last lessons in the um, computer hardware unit. So what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about three main keywords. We're going to talk about cache, RAM, and ROM. Now, these two, specifically, can definitely impact on the speed of your computer. So what we've got to know is, is we've got to know what they can do. Now, we have these three key terms. We have RAM. Now, if we want to talk about RAM, RAM stands for Random Access Memory. And what this means is, is that it's temporary storage, okay? And it's a quick way of getting information around the computer. When you've got a computer and when it starts up, all the stuff is transferred from the hard drive to RAM. And RAM is and then it's a way of and it's passing stuff to it. Now this is a slow transfer, and then when we get to the CPU, between RAM and the CPU, this is fast. So it's filling up, and it makes the process of getting the stuff to the CPU a lot, lot faster. But it's temporary, which means that as soon as it loses power, it's gone. And then it starts all over again. But that's perfect for what we want it for. We want a way of speeding up the transfer between the hard drive and the RAM. And that's what this is the aim of RAM is. Now, the, on the other side, we have ROM. Now, ROM is read-only memory. Now, how what ROM works is, is if you've got a motherboard, there's my motherboard, I have somewhere on it a ROM chip. There it is. Uh, my CPU is here, so I'll just put a C, and this is my ROM chip. Now, the ROM chip... What it does is, the difference between RAM and ROM is mainly that ROM is permanent. And if it's permanent, it means that it stores something very, very important. And what it stores is, is it stores all startup details. All the startup details. So it tells me where my hard drive is. It tells me where all the bits of the computer are. It tells me that the first thing I've got to do is load Windows. That's what ROM does. But on the downside, whereas RAM can be two or three gigabytes, this is tiny. But it allows, but it gives me enough to start the machine up. Okay. Um, on the flip side, RAM we can expand, and I know that a lot of you will have. Things like um, you need a, to run Windows, you need at least four gigabytes of RAM to run at any decent speed. Whereas this will be, you know, 256 kilobytes. It'll be tiny, tiny, tiny. Okay. So it's really important that you understand that. The main difference is the difference between it being RAM being temporary and ROM being permanent. RAM having lots of space and ROM having very little, and what it does. RAM, ROM holds all the startup details. RAM helps the computer when it's running. Now, the last bit we want to talk about is cache. Now, it's not just you going down the shops and wanting a bit more money. The whole point of cache is, is that when we've got our hard drive, all the information is stored on there. And when it goes from the hard drive, it goes to RAM. And this is quite a slow transfer in relative terms. Then when it leaves RAM, we said before that it goes straight to the CPU. Well, that's a little bit of a white lie, because it goes into cache. I'm going to put C. And then even better is, is then it goes to the CPU. Now, although RAM's fast, cache is faster. Okay? 
And the idea is that as I'm transferring, you'll imagine that the hard drive is slow, and it's slowly transferring over to RAM. And then RAM speeds it up a little bit, and then that speeds it up to the cache, which then stores some bits, and then speeds it up, and then sends it to the CPU. And it's just a way of kind of tiering the speed to make it run faster. Okay? The more cache you have, the faster your computer is going to run. So, cache is super fast storage. Right. So, it's super fast. Now, this is where we get to the pyramid of speed. Pyramid of speed. <laughs> anyway, the pyramid of speed works on this. If you want to imagine there is speed, and there is size. A hard drive is very slow, but the size of it is massive. Now, on the next level up, you have RAM. RAM is smaller, but it runs faster than a hard drive. The next level is cache which obviously stores smaller amount than RAM, but it's faster still. And at the very top, CPU, which stores only one instruction, but it's blisteringly fast. I've spelled instruction wrong there, so I'll just have to fix that. Instruct. T-I-O. There you go. It's one instruction, but it's blisteringly fast. Right. Now, if we want to do this as a final summary, when we buy a computer, we need one last table. And when we buy a computer, there are a number of things we have to consider. If you have a low performance, you're only get, you're going to have a low clock speed. And that means that it's going to run slower. If you have a high performance, then you have a high clock speed. If you have a low performance PC, you're going to have a small cache. And if you have a high performance PC, you're going to have a large multi level. Uh, large multi level cache. And the last thing is your number of cores. You can have a single core or a multi core. And this is where we talk about dual quad core processors. That means Four, if we have a quad-core processor, that's four, four instructions executing all at the same time. A multi-core is hugely fat, is really, really fast, whereas a single core can only do one instruction at a time. Okay? Right. That should be the end of the um, hardware unit. You should know the fetch-execute cycle, you should know all about storage devices, and you should know about um, RAM, ROM, and cache. If you know all those things, then that's going to help you in for the exam.